for Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is author Kad Ellis, here to discuss the storybook titled Crossing the Road. Section 27 and Blind SA, in partnership with the Nali Bali, are launching a storybook Crossing the Road. So can you tell us more on the inspiration for the storyline, which centers around the challenges faced by former judge of the Constitutional Court of South Africa, Justice Zeg Yacoub? The story is about Dr. Uh, Justice Yacoub um, growing up in Verulam, Durban, and the challenges he faced um, many decades ago, you know, trying to get access to book um, and access to education, you know, and when Nali Bali and Section 27 approached me about this project, you know, I found it a bit upsetting that the same challenges that Justice Yacoub faced in the 1960s are the exact same challenges that, you know, blind students are facing today. And, you know, for me, I wanted to just shine a light on, you know, their situation and also to you know, offer a sense of hope as well. Because if you look at Dr. Yakub's story, it's an absolutely amazing story. You know, how he, you know, he grew up being a sighted individual, contracted meningitis as a kid, um, as a toddler, didn't even know he was blind or his family didn't even know he was blind until he, he's, you know, started walking and started stumbling into furniture. And yet he didn't allow his blindness to restrain his development. You know, he mentioned as well, because um, I, I spent many hours chatting with Justice Yacoub, absolutely fantastic. An incredible sense of humor, incredible wisdom. And uh, now he spoke about how he actually didn't know he was blind because his parents treated him, you know, as you would treat any sighted person. And he only found out he was blind when he entered school. And, you know, that, you know, that for me was so inspirational. And it's a wonderful inspirational story that I think all of South Africa should read, especially kids. And the book will be launched ahead of the World Book and Copyright Day, taking place on April 23rd. Briefly talk to us more on the importance of storybooks such as these and other reading materials for the visually impaired. A hundred percent. For me as a writer, you know, I grew up in a very poor neighborhood. Uh, I had a very poor upbringing and my only sense of escape as a child was through reading. I was having access to a library and, you know, reading books is freedom. It, it allows you to explore lands and worlds that you wouldn't dream of seeing, you know. And the fact that that is denied to children and people who are blind and unable to read the words, it's completely unfair. This project with uh, Section 27 and Alibali is all about celebrating the court judgment they gave blind individuals equal rights and equal opportunities to have the same access as every other South African. And um, you know, for me, that struck very close to home because, as I said, I had the opportunity to escape the poverty that I grew up in through. And now that opportunity is being offered to kids that are unable to see. Who has this book been designed for? And will it also be accessible across all languages? It will be accessible across all languages. I'm not, I cannot give you specifics as to which languages it's going to be translated into. Um, but it is targeted towards kids under the age of 12. Uh, it's a short story, but I wrote it in a way where anybody can engage with it. Because regardless of the fact that it is a children's book, the story itself about Justice Yacoub is a story that I think all South Africans should read, should become familiar with, and be inspired by. Because we're talking about a gentleman who, despite being unable to see, was a major player in uh, our liberation struggle. And what he had achieved, you know, despite being, um, b- despite being blind, is absolutely amazing. Um, I would have loved to have <laughs> used all the stories he told me, uh, but some are not actually um, suitable for kids. But it, it is, his story is definitely a story that needs to be told. And I'm hoping, you know, there, there'll be enough interest in this story and, um, you know, to encourage people wanting to learn more about this man. 
Last year, the Constitutional Court found that a copyright law was unlawful because it created unfair barriers between blind people and books. So what are you hoping to achieve with this book being printed in Braille? What I'm hoping to achieve is giving more people access. You know, um, again, it's, it's, it's about not denying somebody a right, not even a privilege, but it is a right to read. And not denying a South African the right to read simply because they are unsighted, simply because they are blind. I don't think that is fair at all. And with their constitutional finding, you know, it's we you'd, you'd be opening up a whole world of opportunity for these poor blind South Africans. Because prior to that, in order for a blind individual to get access to the same text as as a regular South African or a sighted South African, be it a a text for fun or a text for education. They have to go through a long process of getting permission from the editor, from the publishers, as well as cover the cost of that translation. You know, so it's you know, not only are they being denied access to reading material because of their disability, but they're also being denied access to reading material because of finances. You now, which is completely unfair. So with this court ruling, you know. I'm hoping and I'm praying that this will open new worlds of opportunity for you know, our fellow South African brothers and sisters who are blind. And lastly, Kat, what is your take on the argument that Braille is falling to the wayside as assistive technology such as screen readers help sighted people with reading standard scripts? I understand that argument, um, but I don't entirely agree with it. And let me tell you why. There's, there's a difference between, as a sighted person, when I'm reading a story, it's completely different to when I'm having somebody else read it for me. You know, because I'm reading at my own pace. I am choosing to reread sentences, to reread words, and to reimagine things within my own mind, you know, according to my points of reference. Whereas if you have something else reading for you, if you have a computer reading for you, it's their interpretation of the text. It's where they choose to put emphasis on certain words or sentences, which for you might not be as important as, as others. And as a South African as well, who has used audio text in my own work, I find it quite annoying when, you know, these, this technology is not designed for a South African market, with South African dialects and South African words and so forth. Um, so, you know, I understand there's a place for technology, but at the same time, we should be giving blind South Africans the freedom to choose. Do you prefer to use Braille or would you prefer to use technology? And, um, yeah, hopefully this court ruling will allow, you know, people to make their own choice. That was Cad Ellis speaking to Crema Media's Polity about crossing the road.